Sakina, you can make me or Spandana co host so we can admit the participants. Yeah. Okay. Am I supposed to do that? No, no, uh, Sakina, I'm telling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Shivalika will start at 3.30 sharp, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rashida, ma'am, I have made you uh, co-host. Yes, yes, yeah. Thank okay, you. You are already live. Okay, great. Hi, should I get started? Uh, yeah, wait, I'll start one second. Okay, uh, I think it's 3.30, we'll start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Binocular Vision uh, Special Interest Group monthly webinar. So as you all know, OCI has uh, four special interest groups in binocular vision, low vision, uh, dispensing optometry, and the clinical optometry. Uh, as soon as, uh, and soon we are coming up with the uh, community optometry special interest groups also. So you all can join them for free on Facebook and uh, attend all monthly webinars. 
So this month's special interest groups, uh, binocular vision features one unique uh, vision training software program, uh, which has been clinically and scientifically proven to improve vision in amblyopia, uh, eye diseases and vision impairments. So when I went to their websites, it says, uh, you know, from brain science to full vision, which is right now on the screen also. So I thought it would be very interesting and uh, let's ask them to give a talk to our SIG binocular vision members. So to give this talk, uh, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Shivalika Sehgal from uh, Revital Vision. Uh, Shivalika is a BSc Optometry and a PGDOS uh, graduate with five years of clinical experience. She initially managed uh, binocular vision and uh, special needs vision clinics at the LVPI Hyderabad uh, before contributing to the practices in Punjab and Mumbai with notable practitioners. Currently, she is serving as an area sales manager uh, for Revital Vision in uh, a vision training web application company uh, that's a Revital Vision. And Shivalika combines clinical expertise with the managerial role. Uh, with four publications, including three as a first author and one as a second author, she also showcases a commitment to research in areas such as binocular vision, uh, vision therapy, neurooptometry, and uh, vision care. So welcome, Shivalika, and uh, thank you for accepting an invitation to give this talk to our members. Uh, over to you now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harshada, for a very warm welcome and introducing me to the group. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Shivalika, as Harshada has already given a brief and a very also a detailed uh, information on myself. I will be uh, talking about Revital Vision in detail and explaining you how we can use it being an optometrist and use it in different dis disciples of our uh, speciality. Uh, I am currently working in Revital Vision uh, as Area Sales Manager and uh, let's dig into Revital Vision which uh, talks about brain science to full vision and what we are talking about in today's uh, uh, web, uh, session is that we are talking about enhancing visual functions through a very unique cortical stimulation that is only offered by Revital Vision. So uh, Revital Vision addresses the unmet need of hundreds and millions of people worldwide who suffer from poor or insufficient vision, which cannot be further improved by uh, current existing treatments that are available to improve visual acuity. It includes amblyopia, which is beyond uh, critical age, patients with poor vision due to any kind of eye diseases, and a uh, few of the patients post cataract and refractive surgery. Our solution is to teach the brain to see better. The quality of the image that we see, as we all know, depends upon two things, that is both image capturing as well as image processing. Revital vision helps improve vision by enhancing uh, the brain's ability to process the visual uh, information that is being captured by the eye. And it actually gives a very significant uh, vision improvement beyond the current treatments that are currently available for us to uh, offer to our patients. Currently, we are looking at three programs that are available uh, for uh, in Revital Vision. First is to improve best corrected vision in amblyopia and some stable pathologies beyond critical age, which is nine and above. We also aim to improve contrast sensitivity functions and facilitate, facilitate neuro uh, adaptation uh, in patients post cataract, multifocals and trifocals basically, and also post refractive surgery. And there's another third program which is available for revital vision. And there we aim to improve uncorrected vision in patients with a very minor refractive error for near or for distance. I will mostly be talking about the first two available programs which are available uh, through revital vision for us. And we will talk about them in further slides. The product that is Revital Vision, is a prescribed home-based vision training app. Uh, it actually is an algorithm-based cloud technology, which is very specifically tailored to very specific needs or a cortical deficit of the patient. And it, it very effectively stimulates the brain uh, 
basic uh, uh, primarily the visual cortex using different types of algorithm we will be talking about uh, the science behind revital vision the scientific building blocks about revital uh, on which revital vision works in the further slides so revital treatment, as I already said, it's a prescription-based treatment. It needs to be prescribed by eye care specialists. And it's a very easy prescription. It's not going to hamper your day-to-day -day, uh, comprehensive clinics or comprehensive care. All a practitioner needs to do is do a normal uh, eye test like we do for uh, testing their uh, distance and near visual eye faculty and uh, very uh, primary binocular functions and we need to identify the patients one we have identified the once we have identified a particular patient we we can prescribe the uh, the therapy to the uh, the this uh, very uh, important uh, cortical stimulation therapy to the patients and it can be performed at home at patient's com uh, computer at a very at their own comfort a patient needs to perform this particular uh, session for four to five uh, days for uh, 30 minutes in a whole week. And uh, the session varies for 30 to 40 sessions. And uh, it can be done over a period of two to three months. Sometimes it also takes four months, depending upon how fast the patient is doing. So it's a very automated process. Once the doctor or the practitioner prescribes the patient uh, revital vision uh, care. Uh, the patient is registered on the system by the practitioner itself and the patient automatically receives an email uh, with their login IDs and password to uh, and also to help them set up revital vision at home and they can start the therapy. They just come for follow-ups just to see how the treatment is going on and also to motivate the patient to continue the treatment as it is uh, in the further sessions. We have a very extensive clinical evidence-based uh, technology here presented in front of you. We have a total of 27 clinical studies, 11 published in peer-reviewed scientific journals, out of which seven are randomized controlled trials. So whatever uh, improvement that you would ask or whatever results the patient would ask you to expect is something that is based on a very extensive clinical evidence. And I will be talking about these clinical evidence also, giving you a very detailed version of these. So from all these clinical uh, evidences, we have three main outcomes from the uh, two main outcomes from revital vision. First is the contrast sensory function. We believe that there's, uh, we believe and we also uh, have an efficacy claim of 100% improvement on contrast sensory functions whenever we check on a fat sine wave or a uh, or a thousand a CSV thousand uh, contrast sensory function charts. We have a two and a half lines improvement on an average on an ETDRS or a logmar visual acuity charts. And us as an optometrist, we do know how important or how much significant uh, improvement it is of a two and a half lines uh, for a patient who might have a visual acuity of say 618 or 624. The another outcome that we look at, which is mostly a secondary outcome, which we get through revital vision is the stereo vision. And us being most of, I think, our group here currently consists of people who are optometrists, sorry, who are uh, practicing binocular vision. And for them, this third uh, outcome would be very, very important, stereo vision. So we know how contrast sensitivity derives visual acuity and how visual acuity in the both eyes derives stereo vision. When we see an improvement in one or both the eyes together, uh, we see a decrease in interocular uh, difference. And once your interocular visual acuity difference is reduced, your stereo vision and binocular functions are uh, definitely uh, or secondarily improved uh, post the therapy. So this is the third uh, factor or a clinical outcome that we see uh, post revital vision sessions. The key advantages of revital vision is we are the only FDA cleared product for amblyopia age nine and above. We all understand that at nine, is considered as a critical age beyond which uh, it has been believed that the patching does not work 
as uh, efficiently as it is supposed to. And we do not even have any other therapy programs who claim for, uh, you know, visual acuity improvement uh, for uh, amblyopia beyond this critical age. So that's the very first and a very important advantage that Revital Vision has over other uh, uh, other therapies that are available online. We have a dedicated US EPT codes for amblyopia. So basically beyond uh, out from India, we are actually uh, uh, claiming, people are claiming insurance for revital vision. And it's a very, very easy to use uh, uh, cortical simulation technology, which can be done uh, at uh, their home's comfort uh, online on their own uh, laptop or a computer. And it is validated in multiple clinical indications beyond amblyopia, like congenital nystagmus, patients with stargards, patients post keratoconus, uh, C3R surgeries. And we have currently served over 15,000 patients uh, through revital vision and have really made a difference. Let's understand the science behind revital vision. So there are four main scientific building blocks on, re on which revital vision stands. First is GABA patch, third is, second is neural lateral interactions, brain's neural plasticity, as well as the last, which is perceptual learning. Let's understand GABA patch. So this on your screens that you can see is a GABA patch, the white and black lines. So this was developed by Professor Dennis Gabber. He is a Nobel Prize winner physicist, and he's the one who invented holograms. So we have would have heard or come across Gabber patch in our subjects of visual neuroscience, and we understand that it is shown, it is known to be the most effective st stimulation uh, when it comes to the uh, neuronal activity. And it is very, very uh, efficiently made as it actually describes the shape of the on and off receptive fields of our neuron neurons at the cortical level. We are we understand that SCAD's visual cortex experiment. So this uh, experiment was done by Hubel and Wiesel uh, in 1981. They even, uh, 1959, sorry, and they even uh, won a Nobel Prize for this particular experiment as this was one of the very, uh, you know, uh, scientific or a very, uh, you know, uh, what do we call it? Uh, Exp uh, in the face of science experiment where uh, they realized how the receptive fields of neurons uh, work while presenting a particular target. So what they basically did was they anesthetize a cat, put speculum in the eye, uh, put some electrodes in the visual cortex area, and they looked at the activity of the brain while they were showing a, a stimulus to the cat on a screen. So what they realized after doing this experiment was that they realized that there were very specific kind of neurons present in the in in the visual cortex, which responded to a very precise location, a very different orientation, and a different type of spatial frequency only. So only very specific type of neurons responded to a very specific type of uh, location, orientation, spatial frequency of the stimulus that was shown, which uh, led us to an idea or the scientific discovery that the neurons in our primary visual cortex, they, uh, for us to characterize an image, they were they respond to a single particular type of image only, which brought us to a, a second phase of this particular experiment, which was done by Yuri Pallad. And what he did was with just that single GABA patch, he added two more uh, next to it, just just adjust into the receptive field and try to understand what happens in the brain's processing. So what he realized was uh, that when a single target alone was presented, there was a certain type of neural response uh, uh, noted. But when the only flankers alone was uh, presented, uh, the neural response was much, much lesser. But when he combined these two targets with the flankers, uh, he realized that the neural response was much, much higher than the very first one. So what we understand from this uh, this particular experiment is that for us to characterize the image, not only a single neuron uh, responds to a particular uh, type of visual stimulus, whereas all the neurons 
and literally interact with each other for us to uh, process a certain type of image and to give up certain type of neural response, which led us to the uh, discovery of uh, lateral interactions at the neural level. Third is neural plasticity, which is the third building block of our uh, scientific building block of our revital vision. It was believed years before that only till certain critical age, the neural plasticity is present. And we all understand what neural plasticity is. It is the ability of our nervous system to adapt to changes and to acquire new skills, basically for our brain, brain to form new neural connections. Uh, uh, at a certain critical age. Before it was believed it was still 9 to 10 years, but after uh, after years of meta-analysis and years of case reports which were presented, they told us that there was a visual acuity improvement in adults with amblyopia after prolonged patching where there was a better eyes vision loss and uh, uh, vision loss which was due to age-related macular degeneration, cataract or any other trauma. So they realized that even after a critical uh, period, there is a uh, neural plasticity present in adults also. This was even proved later by meta-analysis and RCTs done by PDEC uh, group later in the, um, in the adult uh, group. The fourth and the very important uh, scientific block for revital vision is perceptual learning. Those who understand amblyopia understand that there have been studies going for amblyopia since a very, very long time. And uh, the very first type of therapy that was tried uh, in amblyopia was perceptual learning. Perceptual learning is a phenomena where there is a repetitive performance of a particular or a specific visual task under controlled manner and by which a perception or any kind of performance can be modified or improved with practice. So to relate to it would be for us to, uh, you know, getting better at a particular skill. For example, as an optometrist, you would be able to relate to the skill of doing retinoscopy, right? So when you start at optometry, you might not be very confident on your retinoscopy skills, but after years of performing it again and again and again in a repetitive manner on different kind of patients, getting better at it is what you have noticed. So that's a sort of a perceptual learning in which you got so much better at performing a particular skill. Okay, so that's the uh, fourth and a very important scientific building block on which revital vision uh, works. So let's understand how perceptual learning with revital vision works. What happens is that while, while using the perceptual learning uh, technique, the neural lateral interactions are enhanced where we are asking the patient to perform one particular task again and again until they get better at it. So when that happens, your neural lateral interactions at the visual cortex level are enhanced. Once that in is once the neural interactions are enhanced, it promotes spatial interactions among a very specific type of new neurons. And when spatial interactions are improved, your noise level increases. When your noise level increase, uh, noise level reduces, your uh, neural efficiency is increased for neurons to perform. The performance of neurons basically is much much improved, and which leads to improvement of the very first visual function, which is your contrast sensitivity function. Once your contrast sensitivity function is improved, it improves your visual acuity, and once your visual acuity is improved, there is a there's a reduced difference, interocular visual acuity difference, which improves your, sorry, binocular function, that is your stereo acuity. So how does re, uh, revital vision work on brain? We understand that neurons in the primary visual cortex respond to only one type of visual stimulation. It can be based on location, orientation, or spatial frequency, which was proven by... Uh, uh, Hubel and Wiesel uh, scientist. So what revital vision software does unique is that it identifies patients' cortical deficits. So every kind of patient has a specific type of uh, cortical deficit that is present. So it identifies the algorithm of revital vision identifies that and it tailors the algorithm uh, or the stimulation of the program based on that particular needs of the patient. Once that is done, it uses 
gabber patch with the lateral masking technique. Lateral masking technique is with the presence of flankers and it tries to achieve the extreme neural response at the edge of the vision. So it is basically very much similar. So this, uh, this particular step is very much similar to how we perform perimetry where we actually realize or find out the threshold of the patient. So once it realizes or uh, identifies the threshold of the patient, it tries to perform uh, it tries to achieve a very extreme and a very neuro new, a very extreme neural connection at that threshold of the patient until the patient gets better at it when that happens their repetitive performance uh, is done and a very strong neural response is formed when a strong neural response is formed the new neural connections are formed at the brain level or at the synapse level you would, you would want to say and that's how revital vision works on the brain So I understand that it improves visual acuity, it improves contrast sensitivity, and the secondary improvement is your stereo acuity and binocular vision. So binocular functions. So how does revital vision helps in binocular vision? We understand there are six visual functions and all of them are equally important. There are very particular visual functions that are taken care of by revital vision's unique cortical stimulation, as I explained before, how it happens in certain steps. Out of these three, the way the, the contrast sensitivity function and visual acuity, I think everybody understood how it improves, but the main thing is binocular vision. How does revital vision help in your binocular vision? We understand that for a person to achieve, achieve a certain amount of binocular vision, there are three stages that they have to go through. The first stage is simultaneous macular perception, where the image is capture, captured in each eye with their macula simultaneously. Second is fusion, that is uh, trying to fuse both images as one. And Third is stereopsis, which is your 3D vision, trying to achieve, say, trying to perceive that one single image in the three-dimensional, uh, uh, you know, uh, vision. So here, your contrast sensory function as well as visual acuity plays a very, very important role as we know that if there's a disruption in uh, contrast sensitivity, which is very significant, a patient will not be able to reach, achieve the true binocular vision. And if there's a difference in visual acuity, we all understand that if there's an amblyopia where one eye is 660, one eye is 6x, you would not be able to see any kind of uh, stereopsis there. But whereas for a patient who has 6x and a 618 might be having a gross stereo and uh, you might see certain type of fusion present, uh, during your binocular vision test. So when we use revital vision to basically improve their contrast sensitivity function as well as improve their visual acuity, the visual acuity will have a very, very great effect on your binocular vision achievement is where is similarly a very simple way is uh, reducing the interocular visual acuity difference in trying to achieve a better fusion and stereopsis. So coming to the treatment, the treatment is implemented in a series of visual stimulation using GABA patches, which can be controlled, which are controlled parameters and given in a very controlled specific uh, 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 exposure and du duration. So spatial frequency and size of the GABA patch can decrease the amount of uh, the type uh, the, uh, the local orientation can also be changed. The contrast can be changed. The global orientation can be changed. The target flanker separation can be changed and target displacement can be changed. So all of this is very much automated. We are not doing any changes ourselves in the program. Everything is taken care of by the algorithm itself. And uh, whenever the patient is performing the task, everything will change based on the patient's each day performance. So visual perception task that is done through revital vision is uh, via yes and no or one or two answer. The patient will be uh, shown a series of two displays, first display and second display. So a revital vision basically measures the contrast threshold of the gabber patch that is shown. If the patient sees the three images in the first display, they present uh, they 
press the first button, which is the left button, and they see the three uh, three gabber patches in the second display, they press uh, they should click the right button on the mouse, which is the second. So the task will be repeated in a staircase method based on a hit and trial of uh, different types of gabber patches, different types of contrast of the gabber patches, different type of size of the gabber patches, and the number of gabber patches. So this is basically uh, what the this is basically as simple as the task is first display or the second display press one or two okay in case there's a incorrect uh, response that is given by the patient the system will pro provide the patient with the feedback so as we go ahead and uh, figure out uh, how to uh, provide this therapy to the patient we should also be able to give a patient a very clear picture on what they should expect from the white television. So as I've already told before also, uh, we have a 85% uh, efficacy claim where you can expect a patient to improve by two and a half lines on a visual acuity chart and very specifically it is supposed to be a log bar or EKDRS visual acuity chart. 100% improvement in contrast sensitivity function, which can be checked by fact sine wave chart or a CSV 1000 chart. Again, if you are checking the contrast on, uh, on peridopsin chart, you might not be able to check for high spatial, you might not be able to check the differences because the patient's high spatial frequencies are the ones that are most disruptor rather than the lower spatial frequencies. And again, with the improved uh, visual acuity and contrast sensitivity, you would see an improvement in their uh, stereo acuity and binocular functions. With this revital vision, uh, with this revital vision's very unique cortical stimulation technology, what is the opportunity that the eye care specialists get? You will get the opportunity to address a real need of customers beyond whatever the current practices that you are doing. How often and very often actually I feel that you might be coming across patients who are adult amblyops, who are patients with congenital nystagmus, who come under the low vision criteria or a low vision tag, patients post cataract surgeries, specifically multifocals, I uh, multifocals and trifocals and patients post listic who are six by six and are still not happy with their vision because the neural adaptation is something that has not happened. This is something that you are addressing their need with the use of free vital vision. You're providing a very effective treatment to patients uh, who come under the low vision criteria who are 6 by 18 or maybe worse 6 by 24. And if you are expecting a visual acuity improvement of two lines on an average, you can shift them from uh, low vision criteria to just a person with normal vision. And you are providing a significant impact on vision and the quality of life of those particular patients. Obviously, the satisfaction of the patients will improve and it's an additional revenue source of revenue for the clinics as well. I have explained how revital vision works, uh, what are the, you know, uh, what other things that you should expect from us. Let's understand how are we able to give you all these numbers on uh, how much improvement that you should look at. We have a very vast clinical evidence and I will be talking about it in the further slides. These are the contents of our clinical evidence. We have worked on these kinds of uh, subjects and we have seen really good results. This is an adult amblyopia RCT, which was given for a case submission. This was done by Professor Yuri Palat. And uh, here there are two types of groups that they did the study under, uh, a treatment group for, for which revital vision algorithm was given and a control group for which uh, they had given just a very simple demonstration uh, kind of uh, al no algorithm for revitalization. So you can see the average age in both the groups are approximately the same, 35 years age on an average in treatment group and in control group 38 years. The best corrected visual acuity before treatment, before revital treatment in the treatment group is 20 by 51. And similar in the control group as well. After 
the sessions of revised revision are done. There is a two, uh, two line, two lines improvement uh, in the treatment group, whereas no line improvement in the control group. And also we have seen how often we might have seen that whenever you stop a certain kind of uh, therapy or whatever treatment you're giving to the amblyopia, there's a regression that you have noted. And that used to be a very, uh, you know, critical thing for uh, us vision therapists and optometrists to see in the clinic when you uh, when the patient stops the maintenance therapy and come back with the original vision that they were before the treatment. Another key advantage or for revital vision is that that uh, the regression rate is very very minimal, almost almost none and very very minimal. So the mean best corrected visual acuity they had checked for the treatment group even after one year of treatment. So they had done treatment of revital vision once and they called the patient for follow-up after a year of revital revision treatment. And they have seen there was almost to no uh, regression in the visual acuity. Even if it there, there was, there was one or two or say two optotypes or three optotypes change. That's all. Similarly, with the contrast sensitivity, there was more than 100% improvement. You can see the red line, which shows for before the treatment, which is uh, below the normal range. The normal range is basically the gray area in the contrast sensitivity function chart. You can see post-treatment, which is the blue line, which is at the end of the treatment, uh, which returned fairly to the normal range. And if you, if you see the green line, which is 12 months post-treatment, uh, the contrast sensitivity has actually gotten better rather than even decreasing or remaining the same. This tells us that there's a better neural adaptation when your brain processing is enhanced, visual processing is enhanced. They also saw the improvement based on the different type of amblyopia categories and different uh, age groups. They saw that it works on all the types of amblyopes and isometrope, strabismic combined and monofixation. There was a similar kind of trend noted for um, different type of amblyopia categories as well as different age group. We also, they also check the stereo equity via Tritmus fly test before and after treatment. If you can see uh, on the bar graph here that uh, most of them fall, fall under the none, none, no stereo equity, uh, you know, criteria. But post the treatment, most of them shifted towards at least pro stereo or better than that. Similarly, for the worth for dot test before and after treatment, you can see the blue bar telling that most of the patients before the treatment were towards the suppression uh, on worth for dot test, whereas post the treatment on an average, most of them were shifted towards either towards fusion, which can be seen in the purple pink bar. We're talking about a next type of adult amblyopia RCT, which was done on uh, adult hypermetropic and isometropic uh, amblyopes. Uh, this was done in 2014, and there were two groups they were divided into. One was optical correction with revital vision group, and the other was optical correction with computer games, which are apparently known to be provide used very widely in uh, amblyopia therapies. So you can see the age range is fairly similar. The mean uh, best corrected before the best corrected visual acuity before the treatment is also similar. You see a two and a half lines improvement in the treatment groups, which went from 20 by 52 to 20 by 28. And in the control group, there was almost like you can say on an average two to two or three, four optotypes change in, uh, in the control group with the computer case. Similarly, with the contrast sensory function, you can say as revital vision promises a percent improvement in contrast sensory function, uh, you can see on the graph here, the light blue is the baseline uh, uh, measurements. The maroon, red, and the purple one is at the end of the treatment where you can see the contrast sensory function has actually gotten towards the, takes the normal curve. This is another RCT which was done in 2022, fairly 
new where amblyopia uh, secondary to keratoplasty for children with limbal dermoid so these are children who have undergone keratoplasty for a uh, condition called lim limbal dermoid uh, the average age is uh, near to 9 and 10 in the control so in the treatment group revital vision was given along with patching and in the control group only patching was given no other treatment was given uh, and you can see the best corrected, mean best corrected visual acuity in Logmar in uh, treatment group and control group is uh, fairly similar. And you can see post the treatment, there was a, on an average three lines improvement in Logmar at six months and almost no treatment, uh, no improvement uh, seen in the control group. This is another study where, as I have already told you, that uh, revital vision is very effective in amblyopia beyond nine years of age. We had also seen another RCT which was done on patients with albinism as well as bilateral amblyopia, which was then compared with control group, uh, six normal sighted people. And they had seen that the visual acuity improvement on an average was two lines, two lines, actually more than two lines on Logmar in the treatment group went from 20 by 79 to 20 by 38. That is uh, approximately two, six by 12 parts or something. And uh, control group, the visual acuity actually remained the same. This is an important study. It was a congenital nystagmus retrospective study done with revital vision. Here, why I'm specifically talking about congenital nystagmus is that this is one of the group which we might have come across as optometrists where we usually have uh, very less treatment options. It's either yoke prisms to take care of uh, their head postures. Uh, it's either glasses to help them reach the maximum potential of their vision. And uh, or and or any kind of uh, low vision devices to help them, you know, uh, have a better quality of light. So congenital nystagmus, there's no other option available for you. Revital vision is another thing that offers a certain kind of treatment where your patients with congenital nystagmus can go beyond what they already have in their visual acuity and can now be uh, able to independently perform their activities and get a better binocular vision with the help of revital vision. So for example, currently there's, an, there's a retrospective study in front of you where an average age of 28 subjects is about 24 years of age. And you can see the visual acuity ranges before treatment is from 6 by 9 to 6 by 60. And there's an average improvement at the end of the treatment is two lines on an average. Here's a distribution of best corrected visual acuity from baseline to treatment. In, a, in the congenital nystagmus study. And you can see most of the patients have actually improved. And you can see this green line is basically your uh, visual function, uh, functional vision line, where you can see most of the patients have actually crossed that line. And when we say that we give you an improvement of two and a half lines on an average, you can see few of these patients actually improving more than two and a half lines. That is approximately say four, four to five lines after the uh, revital vision uh, sessions. This is another study which was done in 2018 for a condition called Stargardt. Everybody would have come across this condition where we usually do not give any kind of treatment to the patient. You keep it as status quo and the maximum amount of treatment has already been given. So these patients, Three female, uh, two male, uh, two three males and two females were uh, given revital vision treatment and were checked at the end of the sessions. You can see on an average there was a three lines improvement on logmar visual acuity. You can see at least three patients giving at least one line of improvement, but you can see the difference that would would it would have caused for this particular patient who went from one logmar to point four logmar. Imagine the amount of change that it would have happened for them in their daily living activities. Okay. There's currently another clinical trial that is going on with Stargardt's uh, with the 
uh, a hospital with an institute that is doing uh, revital vision on patients with targets. And so far, we have seen really, really good, good results. It should be out soon. This is a post cataract study, as I already told you, uh, revital vision is mostly uh, for improving vision beyond whatever treatment options we have already given to the patient. For patients post, uh, for post cataract studies of multifocals and trifocals who are six by six uh, binocularly or monocularly and are not happy with their vision. The main issue with them is the neural adaptation that has not happened for them and the contrast sensitivity reduction, which has happened due to multiple focal points now with the multiple multifocal lens or a trifocal lens that they have. So revital vision helps them in uh, reaching better neural adaptation, better image processing with the help of GABA patches, which helps to improve their visual acuity beyond six by six, maybe up to six by five. But the main improvement that you see in these patients is their contrast sensitivity improvement, which would be going beyond 100%. Let's look at what are the options available uh, for amblyopia beyond what you're already doing and how those treatments are more effective, known to be more effective or not effective in this particular area. We understand for children, there are different types of uh, therapies or you know treatments that are available currently and that we are giving to the patient. And most of the children might have undergone these therapies and you would have seen good results also. For example, Amblyotech, HDS, as we've been using this since a long time to replace uh, any other kind of therapies and, and uh, electronic eye occluders also. But the only thing is that there is no eff efficacy claim for replacing these kind of uh, uh, therapies with patching. Coming to uh, to improve again, uh, to improve the vision in children beyond uh, what it is required with uh, options that are FD approved. And FD approved is basically letting you know that this particular treatment or that particular treatment is very, very safe for children. So there are two current uh, companies that are doing uh, uh, vision therapy for children age four to seven years and four to nine years is Luminopia, which is a VR based uh, visual acuity uh, improvement uh, uh, device. And Nova Sight is another. It actually tries to uh, replace uh, patching and it has shown really, really good improvements. But for age, be a uh, uh, age range of four to seven or four to nine years of age. Now looking at adults, there are no proven solutions for adults beyond nine uh, for children beyond nine years of age. Currently, there's only one FDA approved product in the market, only one that is Revital Vision, which has claimed and which does claim to improve visual equity on uh, patients beyond their critical age, that is nine years of age. Uh, for amblyopia and which is very, very safe for them to use, very, very easy for them to use and promises good results. These are our recent achievements that we have through revision. Our keratoconus studies was actually chosen the best poster award at ASCRS 2024 annual meeting. And uh, this is a randomized control study proven which has proven the efficacy of our product in improving vision in patients with keratoconus post cross-linking surgery. We've already gone through C3R, post keratoconus, post C3R, and are looking for better solutions for them than this RCT was done. Uh, we have a very, very uh, good study on nystagmus, which was presented at APOS uh, annual meeting on April 2024. And this is a randomized uh, control uh, study which has proven the efficacy of our product in improving visual acuity as well as binocular functions in patients with congenital nystagmus above nine years of age. Sorry. We also had an article uh, presented on the efficacy of revital vision in improving the vision keratoconus patients in AJO. And uh, we, revital vision actually received a high score during the innovation forum at ECOS uh, Winter Symposium in Aspen. This is another 
we are very actually happy to show the study to you, uh, which was presented at APOS in 2024. It was a re uh, prospective randomized control study where uh, patients with congenital nystagmus aged 9 to 55 years were recruited, where the best corrected visual acuity was ranging from 2040 to 2200. And... Uh, there were two groups, again, given which was a treatment group as well as control group. The outcomes of this study were really, really significant improvement of an average 2.1 logmar visual acuity in near and a one and a half logmar uh, visual acuity improvement in distance visual distance VA. 23% of patients in uh, revital vision uh, group basically actually achieved their functional vision which is to 6 by 12 or better. The main gain of this study with congenital of congenital stagnus was their improvement in stereopsis and 88% uh, percent of the patients actually gained better binocular vision, actually binocular vision. This is another uh, this is not out yet, but we are so happy to show the results so that you can actually see what difference revital vision is making beyond amblyopia, even in patients with keratoconus who have undergone the surgery or have done uh, with the spectacles or are uh, using scleral lenses. You can see on an average, there is a two and a half lines improvement for them. So these are seven patients out of 35. This is a small uh, summary of the study that we are doing currently. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I will be ready to take them now. Uh, thank you, Shivalika. Wonderful talk. Uh, actually, my master's research was on uh, perceptual learning and we used all these wow. gamer patches. Uh, so I was more interested in this. Uh, but I must say amazing uh, results and uh, evidence. So uh, there are a few questions. Uh, okay, people have commented that please share this PPT. Uh, guys, if you look into our OCI page, uh, this webinar will be there. So you can take all the notes and uh, points if you want. I'm not sure Shivalika is allowed to share the presentation as such. Uh, okay, Shivalika, I want to ask one question that it's an uh, home-based therapy, right? So how yes. do you track uh, compliance? You know, is there a dedicated person for each patient or software tracks it? How is it done? Okay, so uh, Revital Vision is a very unique cortical stimulation technology. It's all online. Nothing is, uh, you know, patient doesn't need to come to the clinic every day to do this. So all a patient needs is a laptop or a desktop screen of at least 15 inches and a wireless mouse and a stable internet connection, right? So whenever the patient does a particular session, for that day, it is saved at the end of the day. And there's a dedicated team of revital vision, which is tracking the patient's performances on everyday basis. In case there are any kind of, because in the busy clinics, doctors would be not having that much of time to, you know, sort of see how the patients are performing or, you know, uh, what is happening for the patient. So that way, Revital, uh, Visions, uh, Revital Vision has a very effective support group where there's a dedicated team who looks at patients, uh, you know, performance each and every day and tracks it. If there's any kind of discrepancy, we get in touch with the hospital that yeah, this particular patient is, has not been performing well. If you allow us, we can do the troubleshoot shooting, but if you can uh, take care of your, if of this particular problem yourself by calling the patient asking what is wrong, then that is also an option. So that's how we are taking care of the complaints. Okay, that's great. I think Abhinav has raised a hand. Abhinav, you want to ask anything? Yeah, hi, it's a wonderful session. I've also Thank been you. practicing vision therapy since quite some time now. And we do face challenges with, you know, sometimes some of the patients. I would be interested, uh, Shivalika, if you can, you know, tell us, I mean, uh, 
is there any pricing difference compared to India and the other countries or how affordable it is for the end user? Currently, it is very, very affordable in India and hello. definitely, hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, now I can. Yes. So pricing wise, uh, we can definitely get in touch, but I would tell you that there is a difference of pricing in India as well as in the other countries. We have made pricing very, very specific to the Indian market and you might not be able to find the same, same pricing outside of India, but it's very, very affordable for uh, clinicians now uh, and also for uh, uh, patients. Great. So I will get in touch with you. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Okay. Thank you, Shivalika. Okay. There are a few more questions. Uh, okay. Nabila is saying, please show the method or elaborate about the assessment and the interface patients are going to face. Uh, so there's a, I will actually share one website. So it's called training. I will write it down there. Training.revitalvision.com. It's a very easy and a user-friendly uh, cloud-based thing. You can open it on your Google Chrome. There's a demonstration available. It's available in Hindi as well as in English. And uh, you can watch tutorial videos, which are also available on the same interface. You can, uh, uh, you don't need to log in or anything. It's a free demonstration. You can go online and check it. For this group, I would maybe show it, show the main interface, the demonstration interface. Just give me a second. to share the screen. Okay. So you're able to see the screen, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. So you can go on Google Chrome, type in training.revitalvision.com. You can see the, uh, the web page like this. You can click on try a free demo, anybody can go ahead and see how the main therapy is going to be, how the therapies are supposed to be. Click on try a free demo. There are tutorials available, videos as well as instructions. You can go ahead, watch this four videos here. Go to the main task and start a demo session. Actually, it's going to take a lot of time. That's why I'm not clicking on it. Uh, if you have a 15 inch, minimum 15 inch laptop, you can go ahead, uh, check this Revital Vision uh, uh, UI, how it works. It's very much easy. Just go and uh, it's a two minute tutorial for four tasks. You can go ahead and see it. Okay. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Another question is, uh, there is a myth that uh, improvement decrease, decreases after passing time. So is that correct? When you say after passing time as in age related? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, it's a question from Facebook. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Okay. So if it is related to the age, I've already shown you uh, studies and meta-analysis which have shown ki even after the critical age, the neural plasticity is still present. So we have currently not seen anything like ki with age, it does not improve. We have uh, in our studies, the maximum age is 55 years of age. And all those age groups have actually shown really, really good improvement with revital vision. Currently in India, where we are working and we have patients database and everything, and we have seen patients beyond 55 also, 60 years of age, uh, close to 70 years of age or 65 years of age who are doing revital vision and are getting results. So age 
is not is just a number for revital vision if you want to say it but uh, we do not have an upper age limit but we do prefer uh, children uh, to be beyond nine years of age to perform revital vision therapy reason being that you would get a better compliance uh, and it's maybe uh, you know a patient uh, the child would need to be a little you know more active and more understanding of the therapy to do of, uh, of this particular uh, revital vision to do it and uh, in case you want to give it to somebody below nine years of age say seven or eight years of age you might want to train the parent along with the child so that they can uh, see if the child is doing is uh, independently able to do the therapy okay Okay, uh, we'll take one more question from the Facebook. Uh, Akshita yes. is asking, can we give therapy to patients with uh, having choroidal coloboma and nystagmus low vision? Yes. So, uh, to answer this question in two parts, uh, congenital nystagmus or nystagmus, yes, for sure. The age, uh, the visual acuity, best corrected visual acuity limit is 6 by 60. And you can definitely give this patient revital vision uh, uh, sessions. Uh, choroidal coloboma is actually, we had a patient with retinochoroidal coloma, coloboma with uh, partial macular involvement who is who was who is 12 years old and actually improved from 6 by 36 parts to 6 by 18 parts with a with uh, no stereopsis to now 80 seconds of our stereopsis. So you can definitely give it a try. Uh, so far, the condition, if any kind of low vision disease or any kind of uh, condition that you are looking at uh, or a disease that you are looking at, it has to be stable for more than eight months or a year. The visual acuity basically has to be stable for them to be eligible to do revital vision because any condition that is progressive, uh, we might see very frequent changes in visual acuity and you might not be able to see any kind of, you know, uh, improvement that you are looking at. So this condition has to be stable for them to perform this particular task. Right. But okay. you can definitely give it a try because we still have 85% to 90% efficacy claim and that patient might get at least one and a half line improvement on. Right. Okay. Uh, one more with anisometropic amblyopia. How much amount of screen deviation we can consider? So until uh, 8 prism diopter uh, of any kind of squint, you can give revital vision therapy. In case the squint is beyond 8 prism diopter, be exo uh, the patient need, the eyes need to be aligned. Okay. So just to make sure that there uh, there's no involvement of AI, if you're not taking, you're not uh, developing any AC or anything like that, patient needs to be wearing prism glasses or squint surgery, whichever is recommended by the practitioner, either or is okay, beyond eight prism diopters of uh, squint. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, Ramesh is asking, how about charges for the patient and uh, follow-up modality? So, charges is actually, we do not sell to patients. We sell to clinics itself. So, the charges is all on the clinics. Uh, we are not taking any money from the patient. Uh, Treat, uh, follow up modalities is patient has to follow up after every 20th session for basic vision checkup. That is your distance visual acuity, near visual acuity, their contrast sensitivity functions and their uh, uh, binocular vision function, which basically includes their word for dot test or uh, stereo acuity test. So these are the four main tests that are supposed to be done in the baseline as well as up on the follow-ups. Patient come for follow-up, get these tests done, goes back home, continues the therapy. After next 20th session, patient comes back, does the same follow-up, goes back home, uh, does the therapy. That's all. Okay. Mm. Okay, we've got a few more questions. We'll just check uh, them quickly. Yes. Uh, okay, the se this session is for consultants' education purpose and they can buy this RV from you guys or is it to refer patients to you? Yeah, she just answered that question. 
Okay, another one is uh, how do we evaluate revital vision therapy? If patient is having diplopia, can we give them this therapy? Okay, so evaluating revital vision therapy is basically once you set up a patient, a baseline parameters are the four parameters that I told you that you need to check. Put on those baseline parameters uh, on the patient's uh, profile and ask the patient to continue the therapy. Once the patient comes for follow-up, you check the same parameters and put it on the system and you send the patient back home. And at the last session is when patient comes to you for follow-up and you do the main uh, checkup, whatever you do for the patient. That is how you evaluate uh, revital vision therapy. If a patient is having diplopia, we do not prescribe revital vision in case of diplopia because uh, there are other issues that can... Uh, be created if the patient has an active diplopia. The first thing that needs to be taken care of is the diplopia, which can be done by either prism glasses or squint surgery, depending upon what type of diplopia it is. So take care of the diplopia first. Once that is taken care of, then you can go ahead and give revital the vision therapy. If the patient is, if you are looking for improving visual acuity of the patient, not for improving diplopia. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll take this last one. Uh, what's the longest duration where the patients have been followed up post-treatment to assess the stability of the vision? So we have checked for one year uh, long duration, two years long duration also. So once the patient has do is done with the revital vision therapy, post year to that, post two years to that also, we have seen patients coming back for follow-up or you can call patients for follow-up uh, post the treatment and you can see the stability of okay. vision. It's pretty stable even post that. All right. Okay. Okay. Nabila has asked one more. Uh, is there any criteria to stop the sessions? If not, improving to certain you know uh, months or the sessions. Whatever sessions you have given to the patient, be it uh, 40 or 60, uh, the maximum amount of number of sessions is 80 that we give to the patient. In case those 80 sessions are completed uh, and you've seen no improvement, you can stop the therapy. Even after 40 sessions, if you see no treatment or you do not see the potential of the treatment, uh, you can stop the therapy. But we usually... We ideally ask you to let the patients complete the sessions because for some very deep set amblyops, it takes a little time for their uh, system to work better uh, or beyond certain points. So we usually ask them to go till the end of the, complete all the sessions and then only uh, take any kind of decision. We ask you to let them complete their all sessions and then take a decision. Okay. Thank you so much, Shivalika, uh, for thank a lovely you. talk. And uh, thank you for accepting an invitation for uh, such a short notice, actually. And uh, I hope uh, you will give some uh, special discounts or the free trial for our OCI members if anyone is interested. Uh, no, we can talk that offline. Uh, but yes. thank you so much for uh, giving your uh, valuable time to us. It was a lovely talk. And thank you all the participants for joining the session. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I will just put on my email here in case anybody has any kind of questions regarding revital vision. You can uh, definitely get in touch with me. Sure. And I will also put my number in here. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ashada. Take care, everyone. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Revital Vision on OCI platform. So it was great presenting here and giving more information to new optometrists and all the optometrists basically. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ashada. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Revital Vision. Thank you.